So, so first we in front of my house. <laughs> like I live here on Shear Avenue in the Wheat Wake section in the city of Newark. And this is my water filter that I use, pure water filter uh, that I use in my household that I've been using for at least a year since we first received these filters because I have one of those snake uh, oh, gooseneck. gooseneck sinks that y'all said we can't connect the rigid, so I had to use the, the, the regular one. My mother has a regular one, I have this one. Uh, you know, I have a lead service line. My house was built, obviously, before 1980. Actually, this house was abandoned. I fixed it up and moved into it, you know, uh, you know and uh, that's, that's how I got here. But, you know, it is, has a lead service line, and we've been using this filter, and, you know, uh, I'm concerned just like everybody else about the filters working, obviously, because I've been using it, cooking with it, so forth and so on. And as I've been telling people recently, uh, you know, my wife is uh, almost 27 weeks, right? So, you know, she's been uh, using this filter for a long time, like using it to cook with, using it to put ice in the fridge freezer, using it to do all kinds of stuff. So we bet our own safety and life that this filter is working. Uh, plus, you know, everybody else using a filter. Flint. Everybody all across the state of New Jersey, the nation using pure water filters. I mean, we have no expectation that it didn't work. And we still don't know uh, if it works or not, actually. Um, so I guess you could talk about it, Crane, but you know, I know we tested three water filters or three homes out of 40,000 or 38,000 water filters that have homes. And we found two defective and one was good. So we just started giving out water to make sure people were okay, precautionary measures until we find out what's going on. Yes, I mean, we, we've given out over, you know, you say 38, I, some people, I could say 40. We've given out a lot of pure water filters. This is a, a national product that Flint, not only Flint was using, it's used widely around the world. Um, it's rated by the EPA uh, as removing 99%, 99.5% of lead. Um, so the city of Newark, as we was uh, conducting a follow-up to look at how much orthophosphate is going through the system from the beginning of the system where the water comes in from our aqueduct to the end of the system like you know like the uh west ward the upper west ward or the farther south ward going into hillside those would be like the end of the system what's what's the orthophosphate though what is that that's the corrosion inhibitor it's like a food food grade it's ad, uh, uh, additive additive that's widely used it's in a pepsi soda right now no? any one of those drinks you normally do it's in it but what we use it for a different technology just to, co do, to provide a coating in the pipe, right? The coating in the pipe to reduce lead from leaching into the pipe. So as a part of us doing a study to make sure that the orthophosphate was coming um, into the system at the rate that we needed it to come in, uh, we tested three filters under extreme conditions. And I wanted to just emphasize when, I keep, when we say extreme conditions. We didn't test them under normal conditions because normal conditions we know they work. We wanted to go a little above and beyond, you know, to, to test this filter, I guess we want to say like to a breaking, breaking point. And we found out that in three homes, two of the filters failed and one of them passed, you know, and, and one of them passed. So it was actually two faucet mount filters, um, the one like you say your mom had, and it was one pitcher, one of the pitchers failed. Um, so immediately um, the EPA is working with us we alerted the public on Tuesday that it failed and um, being very transparent, you know, people always pick with us and say we're not telling the truth or we're not getting the information out there, but it seems like we were. Was we, it Tuesday or Saturday when we alerted the public? We alerted the public on Tuesday, um, on Saturday. Saturday. We alerted them on Saturday um, when we got the results back. We alerted them on when Saturday. did you get the results back? On Friday, Friday about 3.30, um, we alerted them. Discussion, we were gonna expand the pool and uh, we alerted them Saturday around 2 o'clock. We had the press conference. So for us to be sure, we just have, we have to test more water filters. Oh, we're going to expand the pool. Yeah, this, this, just just show, this, this can show the residents that the city do a lot of testing. People say we don't do testing. It just shows you, like, we do do testing. Right. We test stuff when you think we're we not testing. And we did this on our own. Nobody forced us to do these things. We, we're doing this type of test. So it shows you that we're aggressively doing tests just to check, you know, the products we had and how the orthophosphate was working with that system, and it failed. So now, we, we, today we just agreed on uh, some procedures and protocols uh, of how we'll expand the testing parameters. When to you get say a, we, you mean who? The US EPA, the NJDP, and the city of Newark.
So we all came together and agreed on the protocol. The feds in the state. The feds in the state, in the city. Yeah. You know, let's not leave the city out because yeah. we, we bring this information to the right. state and the right. city. They don't bring right. it to us. Because right. people have a mismatch, it's like a company came in here and went around to houses and just started testing no. and said we have a lead problem. Right. That, that don't happen. You know, you we know test. What, you know what bothers me is like all of the misinformation, like people out here, I hear people on, on the internet, they got people waiting outside of press conferences telling like information that's completely false. Like just really, I, I, I read something telling people don't come to the VMAs, the Video Music Awards. I mean, these are people who want to see the city fail or want to see me fail, one or the other, uh, who are telling people information that's not real. Like, it's just bizarre. I mean, we got a union county elected official running his mouth, <laughs> talking about stuff. He has no idea at all what he's, and, and I, what I want to know is where these people were at a year ago. Like, we were dealing with, we've been dealing with this stuff, you know, for so long. First of all, every home in Newark does not have a lead service line. Everybody in the city don't have no, one. No, no. Right, so every, so, Many people ain't even affected by it anyway. People on your on your right on your block don't even have a less service. So how, many, right. how many homes have less service? So in the city homes, it's about fifteen thousand homes, fifteen to sixteen thousand homes that have lead service lines. Okay. Right, that, that go to homes. It's about eighteen thousand lead service lines in the entire water city water infrastructure. That's the Paquanic and the Wanaku. It's mm -hmm. about fourteen, a little over fourteen thousand remaining in the um, Paquanic system. So we, you know, the related service line program was not just in the Paquanic system, it's in the Wanaku system too. So it's in all five wards. We're working in all five wards. So to replace those lead service replace lines. Those lead. If you sign up for the program, you know, um, you sign up and you give us permission. Uh, just to go back on what the mayor said, some of those elected officials wasn't even around. We, I'm thankful for the ones that were, was around when yeah. we had to get the amendments on the legislation to use uh, public, public money. money on private property. And I think the program, the more we come out and work on the blocks, the people coming out and they're signing up. So I just want to, you know, the misconception that we, we're not being transparent and we're not sharing information. No one would have this information if we didn't share it. That's right. We give it to the state. Right. Say, hey, we tested. And in the RDC. We, and no, the feds. Again, nobody wouldn't have it right. if we didn't give it to the state. And then we have, like, I remember Channel 4 came in maybe about uh, five or six months ago and they tested all the rec centers. Right. They, they don't give out positive information. Right. You know, I was listening to, to the radio this morning, or maybe it was yesterday morning, and I think Charlemagne said, you know, uh, nobody, the, the truth is boring. Right. You know, the three addicts about the, the, the lie, everybody right. want to hear the lie. If it's they would have tested the rec centers and when it came back with high levels of lead, it would have been all over the place. But, you know, but the fact that it didn't have high levels of lead, you know, nobody said nothing about you know, it. I was in my car and I said, man, Charlemagne, he said, uh, the truth is boring. People want to hear the theatrics and the drama around a lot. So the lot yeah. get a lot of attention. So restaurants don't have lead service lines. McDonald's ain't got a lead service line. Right, right. A dig ain't got a lead service line. Prudential no. Arena. Prudential, a good. brand new building. This right. was built uh, so 2007, 2006. People tell people don't telling come to the Prudential Arena because the water is bad. It's terrible. And people who are going around telling people that the source water is bad. What do I mean when I say source water? Like the so, water in the reservoir, right? Okay, so you know, New, the Newark system was built off the New York system. The New York, they call their system the Delaware Aqueduct or the Catskills Aqueduct. So I, this, it was a similar model. So ours is the Wanaku and the Pequannock. So we have five reservoirs that hold about 15 billion gallons of water um, that feeds into the city. So it goes to our treatment plant. Our source water is monitored and checked daily. Lead don't come into the source water, not the source water that we come into our pipes. Coming down that 24 miles of aqueduct that comes into the city, there's no lead in it. Only, there's no lead when it gets in the city's water main. Only when it gets into those lead service lines that feed properties like yours, that's why you got the picture. Yeah. Like that, that lead service line is probably the size of a quarter or a 50 cent piece. That, that's a lead line. So, you know, um, it's amazing that, you know, we walk up right now and drink out of a hydrant. You know, uh, right. kids playing in the hydrant, you can't wash up and get lead because you're washing up with water. Uh, but what, what, what do people get? The, what do, I don't understand what they gain by telling everybody, like, the water is poisonous. Like, and, and they get upset when we try to correct them and say the water is not poisonous. They say, oh, you're giving people misinformation when you tell them the water is not poisonous. Well, you're giving them inf misinformation when you say the water is poisonous. Because an uh, open-ended kind of statement like that without context is incorrect, right? And, and it's dangerous. It's a public health issue because the person next door, water might be fine. My water 
might, might be those people over there have got a brand new house. It is highly unlikely oh. they have a lead service line. Copper pipe feeding right. the house. You know, you know, when I bought this house, we had a lead service line. I'm sure all these people up and down, you know, the weak wake section got them. You know, because the houses are old. And that was a common. It was a common practice in construction during that time, the late 1800s, until the uh, mid 40s. That they start the lead was what they use. It's flexible, you know. It was easy to put in, and around the mid 40s they started using copper because they started using lead for the war. They needed all the metals to go, you know, fight the war. World War II was around that time. In 1952, uh, February the 10th, 1952, uh, Newark banned the use of lead service lines and yeah. in, in new in homes that were constructed after that. You had to use copper. You know, although it was used earlier than that, but we made it an ordinance or they banned it and said, hey, you got to put yeah. in copper. The federal government banned lead solder in 1986. So th the new homes that's being built in, in the 80s and the 90s, we know they're using copper pipes because it was banned, lead was banned by the federal government. But we know in 1953, you know, Newark said you got to put copper in. Right. So we were, we were in the forefront back then, yeah. if you think about it. Yeah. So if you're, if you're concerned, you know, my mom calls me every night now. <laughs> she wants to know what's going on, right? So for the resident, what, what is it they need, they need to know? One, how do you know if you're affected or not, if it's your household? So if you really want to know how you're affected, you can call the water department at 973-733-6303 and ask us to come out and do an inspection. Mm -hmm and get a free water test. It's free. It don't cost you nothing but a phone call. And to see if you got a lead pipe. We can see if you got a lead pipe, we're gonna do an inspection, it'll take five minutes. Give you some, inform you information about what you need to know about lead, and get an inspection. If you're concerned about your kids, go get a blood test. So it's then there's free. also a website that has all the addresses in a database system and you can type in your address, right? Yes, and you the, can go to- What's the website's like title again? You can go to uh, NorcLeadServiceLine.com. Mm -hmm. You know, type in NorcLeadServiceLine.com. You go on the right site, type in your address, and they can say you have a lead service line. You know, right then and there, whether you're the landlord or the resident, right? Two family, three family, four family. You can serve, either call us or go on NorcLeadServiceLine.com and look up and see if your address is in the affected area. So we're saying that if you have a lead service line and you're in the Poquonic area, you are, you can go into any of the four distribution sites in the city which are three rec centers in the health department and pick up cases of bottled water. Yes. But what is that? What is the difference? Like people, the reporter today was trying to beat me up to ask me what was Wanaku? What the difference? There's some high readings in Wanaku. What's the difference between Wanaku and Pequonic? So, you know, Newark, Newark, like I said, is one of the older cities. We were the first, you know, uh, Newark used to have a lot of reservoirs in the city. Yeah, 350 you know, years old. 350 years old or more. Depends what you, how, you, how you count the numbers right there. there. So Newark had reservoirs inside the city. So the last one that we closed down uh, in, the, in the 70s was right there on 9th, 9th Street and South on Java. They actually called it the Reservoir Village. People right. don't know why they called it the Reservoir Housing or the Reservoir Village. That was an open water reservoir. Wow. You can walk by and see water in there and throw water in there, stick a cup in there and maybe drink some water. There was treated water, there was drinkable water. And the EPA at the time made us close it down. So when you say um, the Baquanic system, we started to find out that having reservoirs inside the system was easy to be contaminated. They bought land further up in the mountains, right? And they bought a, Newark was one of the first, it's like Jersey City, yeah. having the Booten Reservoir, we bought the Pequonic Reservoir System, which is about five man-made lakes, right? That we collect rainwater in, right? Surface water, called that surface water. And in the early 20s, they built a, another addition because at one time, Newark population was about 350,000 people. So the city of Newark was 350,000 yeah. people. Like one point more. And, and, some, and people fail to forget that some of these other towns, Bloomfield, Belleville, West Orange, they were Newark at one time, which could have been a million people. Parts of Elizabeth were Newark. So they built the Wanaku Reservoir System, right, Wanaku. So in the city, Wanaku System, as the East Ward started to develop with a lot of industry, they had a separate system to bring water in. We wanted two water systems to bring water in so the city would always have an adequate supply of water, right, in the time of drought or emergency. Right. So that's why we have two yeah. systems. And the Wanaku system is not, is not having the same problems that we're having. No, the Wanaku system is even bigger. So the Wanaku system just, just oh, don't. I never knew that. No, yeah, of course. It don't just feed Newark, it feeds parts of Elizabeth, it feeds Bayonne, okay. uh, Kearney, 
East Newark, Harrison. So what about people who say they, they got high readings in Wanaku in their house? Like a couple people got high lead exceedances in their house. So the, the lead and copper rule allows you to have, uh, what came in the early 90s, 90th percentile, right? So you don't expect that no one may not have, never have a high lead hit, right? You can, if you've seen Suez water had a hit maybe in December, around the same right. time we were giving out filters, right? Suez, fed, they feed a uh, Hallsworth plant. 900 to 800,000 customers. 800,000, right. Uh, 800,000 people, you see them in North, right? We, we probably have about 40,000 people affected. But in saying that, they had a high lead hit. So you required to do, they tested 110 homes and they had about 11 of them that exceeded. But in July, this July, the latest readings, they under. They under by like a 0.2%. So right. they tested at 15 parts per billion and you exceed at 15.4 parts per billion. So they don't have exceedance right now, but they're that close. So um, they need one more of those periods like that, 50, under 15 or lower, and they'll be in compliance. Right. But they got one, one monitoring period in compliance, but, you know. And that's what's going on. In so the in the wine queue system, you can have a hit for a variety of different reasons. Somebody could have just changed a new faucet. They could have got rid of an old faucet, put a new faucet in, did any type of plumbing in that may trigger, you know, a lead. Right? And it could be in a home that had a lead pipe or lead solder, you aggravated the solder. That doesn't mean the corrosion inhibitor isn't working. It means that you may have did a modification that could have triggered the hit. Right. Or you could have just went and said, you know what, I want to filter. You know, I had people that was mad at me. We did, me and you did the yeah, community yeah, meetings yeah, in the yeah. East Ward and they were adamant about getting the filter. Even after the testing showed that they don't have, they, they don't have it. Right. Right, so they get a, a test a month later well, that's what people, and they had a hit. That's what they're telling us, NRDs, give water to everybody in the city. Well, that's that's. First of all, we, it's, it's not economical for us to give water to everybody in the city. We just don't have it, have it like that. And two, everybody don't have a problem. And to project that everybody has a problem is not only incorrect, right? To me, it's unconscionable that you would put that out there because then you create a state of panic. You create a, a, a health emergency. Because honestly, the more people use the bottled water, the longer it's going to take us to get the, the, the fix in terms of what we're trying to get the, the pipes to work or get our pipes changed all those other kind of things. So we gotta be mindful of that too. So, and why is that the case? Why is it that, you know, we like talk more about that. Why is it important that we have to have water circulating in people's homes and through the pipes? So, you know, and I'm gonna just go back. It, it showed two things. One, when we said I tested these filters under extreme conditions, that means we had the water stagnant from five to 11 hours. It was that sitting means there. Nobody not using the water is actually sitting in the lead pipe, right? So that means the inhibitor not moving through the lab, is not moving through the pipe to coat it because you're not using water. As you use water, whether it's taking a shower, uh, doing some laundry, using the bathroom, flushing the tank, brushing your teeth, you allow a new water to come in with the inhibitor to start coating the pipes, right? Like insulating, putting that little coating around the pipes. If you're not using water because we're giving out bottled water now, that means the inhibitor just standing in the city's water main, right? Although we are flushing, but we're not in your house where it's coming through your house. It's coming through the city's water pipes, but it's not coming through your house pipe. So the more you use it, you know, the, or the normal use, the normal use that you would do, yeah. right? The normal use you would do, you allow fresh water to constantly come into your house three, four, five, six, seven, ten 10 or 20 times a day, dozens of times a day, with the new inhibitor just you know, absorbing your pipes. You should want to always do that. So what about anybody that don't know? No, we don't know nothing about all this stuff you're talking about, orthophosphate, this, inhibitor, that, this thing, this, that thing, that. The, all they know is what they hear on the news. The water is poison. I can't drink the water. I can't go to restaurants. The VMA should be canceled. It should be a state of emergency because the newest water is just killing us. We, and, and, and the city won't tell us the water is killing us. And they got that all over the place. Uh, one person had on the internet this morning, I had to correct it. She was saying, uh, if the water wasn't poisonous, why are we delivering uh, uh, bottled water to the city of Newark? And I, and I had to correct the, you know, uh, one, the, the, the water at the reservoir is not poisonous, right? right? When the water gets in your lead service line, lead comes from the pipe into your water. You need a source. That's the, the, that's that's the source. And, and, and what we're trying to, this thing that you're talking about, corrosion control, is what we're putting in the water so the lead won't come from your pipe to get into your water, right? right? When, when that becomes effective, then all we, we should see some see some right. levels going down. We should see the things going down, and we have to give people water because we're not sure. We're testing to see if these things that I'm using in my house that's nationally used that's not, that's used by like millions of people across the country. Yes. If it's actually working for us, right. right? And what we want to do is make sure you're safe. Then sorry, 
because we could test it without giving you nothing. And, you know, a month from now, say, oh, we found out that the pure things don't work. We want to give you water while we're testing it to see if it actually works. So, so it's, 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 And uh, not everybody, because <laughs> everybody don't got a lead service line. Everybody don't have a lead service line, and they want to filter. But, but they don't have a lead. It's interesting because a, a friend of mine called me. He's, a, he's an engineer in another town, and he says, why are you guys always letting them know what you're doing? And I'm saying, why shouldn't we? He's like, y'all creating problems for yourself. I'm like, we transparent. You know, we want to show you that we're not hiding anything. Yeah, but you, look, they're beating you, they're dogging you up in the media. And I go back to says, negativity sells. You know, the truth don't get no support. That's right, brother. I mean, and then if you don't do it, then when people find out months from now that it was an issue and you didn't do it, then that's another issue. Right. Right? But the, look, I got to tell people, we got to tell people. We live here. I'm not visiting the city. I live here. So I got to tell people. have been here. Yeah, for, for all my life. Right? So if I... I mean, I got to, telling people is telling my family and friends who live here, right? So, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, I, I'm telling my neighbors, my friends, my family, everybody in this community, residents, that this is going on. And I'm not trying to alarm you or scare you uh, uh, or, or make you never use the water again in your life. You just need the right information. Unfortunately, there are people who, and you know who these people are, everybody knows who these people are. They use whatever negativity they can to expand it, to blow it up, to create an issue. Because if there was no issue, then it wasn't nothing, it's nothing for them to do. That's their job. Their job is to get on TV and tell everybody the world is going to end and Newark mm -hmm. is going to end it and the mayor is responsible for it and scream and holler about it. But they have never given out a filter. They have not, they're not at these stations trying to help us give out water. They don't have one plan for us to fix this thing at all. Zero, right? They haven't went and got any money for us to, to fix these lead service lines. We did all this on our own with the help of a few people from the state and help people from the federal government, right? That's it. Nope, none of these people have said one thing, and they won't say nothing tomorrow. When you ask them about it, they still not gonna say anything. But man, some of them don't live in the city. Right, some of them don't live here. You know, a large majority of them, they just come Yeah, well, the people who don't live here, that's, that's down to all the people who actually are in the city that are responsible for making sure their neighbors know the facts. And not the facts of how they see it, but the facts of how they are, and they're creating hysteria in the city. Like people, what happens if people don't go to restaurants? They lose money. Restaurants lose money, they close. They people close. lose their jobs. Uh, uh, people lose their jobs, we stop getting tax money uh, for, the, for the city, right? People don't own homes. You take the city backwards. You tell the Video Music Awards who would never come to the, to the city years before decide we're going to come to Newark now, don't come uh, because 18, we have 18,000 lead service lines in the city that are experiencing exceedances, right? You, 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 you're telling people don't come to the city of Newark because it's contaminated and we need a revolution because of 18,000 uh, you know, homes, and, and, I, and I don't want to belittle it, you know, what I'm saying is I, I, people need to put it in perspective, right? Because anybody that got an exceedance is, is, is a problem. Right. And that we need to be trying to address all of it in, in a comprehensive way. But we can't lie to people just to get, you, them, get them come to your meetings. Mm -hmm. If you can't get people to come to your meetings without lying, then you shouldn't have no meetings. You know, my other thing is they get, you know, the people in the community, they, they really want to help. They should have people sign up to have their lead service line replaced. That's it. You know, instead of giving the residents the, the negative information or the wrong information, hey, you know what, the city, did you register to have your lead service line replaced? Hell, even if you talk bad about the city, tell them to go get the lead service line replaced. <laughs> Say, the mayor's terrible, he's horrible. Hey, but sign Throw up him the out. Program. Sign up, get a lead service line replaced, yeah. right? At least do that. Or, oh, the mayor's terrible, he's horrible. Uh, here's, a, here's some filters and some water. As a matter of fact, NRDC, who's suing us, was giving out pure water filters too. Oh, they, that ain't a topic right now. Right. That, that ain't on the news. Everybody's giving out these pure water filters. Everybody. They're they giving the them out. Everybody is. They go back to what you said. That's not, that's not a headline. I mean, it's bizarre. I know we, we, we've been talking for a long time. It's a very emotional topic for me, man. Uh, you know, and I just get upset when people try to make it seem like we're trying to trick them or fool them or giving them misinformation or lying to them uh, for the benefit of whatever it is you're trying to do. Run for office. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, stop people from putting you out of office, getting people to come to your organizational meetings, making yourself popular on Instagram or Facebook. I mean, all, all of this stuff, it just burns me up because I was born and raised here. I live here my entire life. I have done nothing in this city but try to improve it. And people know that, right? And, 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 and the reality is I got a lead service line. I had a lead service line. And I've been using this, right? I've been using this, this filter. And it's, it's important to me. And, and I keep saying it because it's in my mind. And it, I, it, it might not rightly be in my mind, but these people put it in my mind. So I know they're putting it in everybody else's mind. You know what I'm saying? It's in my mind, the doubt 
and about what's going on, the, the concept that, you know, maybe my wife who's pregnant has been drinking lead. That's in my mind. It's in her mind, you know what I mean? So I know it's in other people's minds and it's serious, and it's serious enough for us to have the right information, to act correctly, to get this thing fixed, and not listen to people out here uh, trying to use this for their own personal benefit, man. You know, I heard this fool on uh, NJTV running around uh, talking about what's going on in Newark. Ain't never stepped foot in this town for nothing. Never had a conversation with me, never talked to me about anything, never offered us uh, a filter, a water. Uh, legislators who sit on the legislator have never advocated for us to get money to change land service lines. So, uh, I mean, if you're trying to run for office, that's cool. Don't use me to do it. So, you know, the city's done a good job of like creating any possible question or all questions that we get, we like put it onto a sheet. We got like nine pages at this point in time, like who can we ask questions and answers. And to your point, there's, you know, 18,000 households affected in the city um, with lead, lead service lines. And then 15,000 are that in the Baquanic system that, you know, are waiting for the corrosion system to be in place and therefore are using bottled water at the time. Which means that there's 200, almost over 200,000 other people that aren't affected. So how do we arm them with the information so that they can start advocating? Well, you, you have to be careful because some households have more than one person in it. You know what I mean? Yeah, so that's like when people say, you only gave out 40,000 filters. Well, if you got two people in the house, there's about 80,000 people that are affected by that, right? Yeah, so. But the point is, there's way more people that are not affected by this. Oh, right. of course. That we can Absolutely. arm with the right information to get it done. So they can go to NewarkLetServiceLine.com to find all the information that they need. They can go to the city's website to find information. That, that's the point there. There are more people in the city who are not affected by this than are. So, you know, man, I think a lot of times you said this is a good question. I think a lot of people play on the city's um, ability to communicate. We, we do a great communication job. We do a quarterly mailing. We do, we do all type of notices, right? And a lot of times when you look at that mail, we just, ah, we throw it in, we throw it in yeah. the garbage, right? right? So then when the news is saying the water is contaminated, you don't know what's going on because a lot of us don't read it. Right? Right. Not that you can't read, we just don't read it, we don't pay attention to it. So we have a press conference when we on Facebook. We did a teletown hall last night. Or we throw out the things the people are simply saying we have in the community meeting or we do the robocalls. People don't pay attention, but we are educating the people. If they listen to the positive, like I said, the positive stuff we don't want to hear. So robo, the city of Newark is calling you to let you, we hang up. You know, we answer the phone, we hang up real quick. That's the message that needs to be, be listened to. Engage you know, Take that 30 seconds to, to hear the message. Take that two minutes to read that little pamphlet just came. Think facts you should know about your water, yeah, right? We all have a duty to be responsible. Just, just read it. So when somebody come in and giving you misinformation, you can say, oh, that ain't what's going on. You know, it says yeah. it right here. You know, right. It says that they letting us know what's going on. We should be alarmed that, you know, the media coming to our city, right, a year later, acting like something just happened. So let's just end it and tell me how long this thing going to take, man. How long is it going to take us to get that out of this situation we're in? You know, right now we expanding the testing pool, right? We're expanding it. We just doubled down on the criteria everybody agreed to. We're extending the parameters of the testing pool, get the accurate number. Right? To see if the filter's working. To see if the filter's working. The permanent solution, we already started that process. In, in, in March, removing lead services. In, in, to in to May, remove the lead service we, lines. The, in May, we, we already started putting the orthophosphate in, right? So, you know, we, we, need, the, we need people to use water, let water move in. So, we so can if, I need, if, if I got a lead service line, how do I get my lead service line replaced? Go on to leadserviceline.com, right? And, for, and see if you're eligible first or, or to have your line replaced by seeing if you actually have a lead service line. Call us so we can do the visual inspection and you can fill out the paper on the site if you're the landlord. And if you're a resident, and we, and we did that inspection for you, and once we give you the information, call your landlord, tell them to register for the program. Yeah. Because so, I want to explain this to people. You don't have to pay nothing up front. We're not asking you to give you no money up front. Right, we're saying up to $1,000. And phase one started in March of 20. How many have we done? We've done a little over 700, and it's going to end in March of 2020, right? So. 60 days after that, we're going to give you a bill, right? And then you got 12 months to pay that bill. So you may come back and say, hey, you owe us $380. You, got, you can pay it in full. We would like you to pay it in full if you can. But if not, you got 12 months to pay it. So how long is it going to take for the new inhibitor 
or the new thing to coat the pipes. For six so to eight months, we should start seeing the results that we want to see. Are we seeing some but, results now? Yeah, we're seeing, we're seeing, we, we're on pace. Right? We're very optimistic, but we're on pace to seeing that, hey, your orthophosphate is in the system, right? So, you, just, you know, as data comes in monthly, right? So that's why we say six to eight months, we're starting to see more data. We're still aggressively doing testing, right? We're still offering free testing. We still got free, free water testing, free uh, lead service line inspection, and a free testing with Dr. Wade and them over at the health partner. They're doing a fantastic job, you know, having yeah. kids come in. And yeah, shout out to Dr. Wade, to, to Commissioner Percicelli over at the health department. I just want to give us a shout out for the help that they're doing. And, uh, you know, even Mc Commissioner McCabe and the... Oh, and DP. They, they, yeah, they've been working with DP. Everybody's been hanging out with us. And shout out to OEM, man. OEM, shout out yeah. to OEM. We got, we yeah. got to say shout out to the Public Safety Department and OEM because they boots on the ground. Yeah. You know, helping us get these this, this yeah. water out yeah. into the into the city at all yeah. the distribution centers. I appreciate y'all, man. And, and all that staff that everybody don't see. So that the, the senior staff that people don't see that's yeah. around the round table early in the morning, yeah. late at night. We got to shout them out too because they're doing a fantastic job. And all the residents that's been helping out, stepping up to the plate, delivering water, helping us pass out oh, water. And all those helping residents that's coming in filters. with the seniors and just helping bring them down there, bringing them to pick up water yeah. and. Who's not waiting outside to talk to CNN? No, who's not waiting out. <laughs> and, 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 All right, and, man. And a big shout out to the residents. God, I seen Lord it. help I just us. want to end with this. A big shout out. I seen a, a gentleman on uh, NBC this morning, and everybody was talking negative. And he was like, hey, they didn't create this problem. You got to give them time to fix it. You give everybody else time to get it together. So a shout out to you know the people that's really understanding what's going on and, and want to give the positive thing. Because the news Appreciate don't always show the positivity. Amen. Appreciate y'all, man. Thanks.